The Great Steppe, millenniums of events, hundreds of nomadic tribes and people. They lived, worked, made discoveries, conquered large tracts of lands, and left us some mysteries. To learn more about it, watch the project called Enigma of the Great Steppe. To the lands where the sun rises, to the right where the sun reaches afternoon, and to the lands where the sun goes down, to the left, to the lands of midnight. It is the world where I have countless subjects. It is me who gathered and united all the tribes. These are the words of the inscription in honor of Kul Tigin, one of the oldest monuments of the Turkic written language. And with these lines, the author, Yoleg Hagan, the ruler of the Eastern Haganat, a writer, poet, and historian, demonstrated all the power and immensity of the territories under his control, the lands of the Great Steppe. Nowadays, it is a whole galaxy of independent states whose past is inseparably connected with the Turkic culture. And toponyms preserved here are evidence of this. What is the Great Steppe? Who was the person that Cherkizovsky Market was named after? And the names of which famous people were originated from the name of the place? He had been working for 40 years on collecting materials for his book about the lands which he had never visited. Correspondence with foreign colleagues, tedious work on drawings, and valuable time which he took out from his administrative activities were reflected in the thousand pages of the book, which was going to be given to the reader. Seventeen o five, Amsterdam. The Dutch politician, cartographer, and businessman Nicholas Whitson presented his works on Tartari with a detailed map of the region. After looking through the work, President of the Royal Society of London, Robert Southwell, wrote that it was easier to map a geographical description of the seabed. The territory known to us as the Great Steppe was so vast and impressive. In the middle of the Eurasian continent, the Great Steppe stretches from the Usuri River to the Danube, in the north bordered by the Siberian Taiga and in the south by mountain ranges. This geographical area is divided into two parts, which differ from each other. The eastern part is called Inner Asia, Mongolia, Jungaria, and Eastern Turkestan are located in this part. It is a rigidly outlined geographic region, but cultural influences easily go beyond the geographical boundaries. The western part of the Great Steppe includes not only the territory of modern Kazakhstan, but also the steppes of the Black Sea, and even, during certain periods of history, the Hungarian Pashtu. In general, there is such term, Hingan Carpathian area of the steppes, which stretches from Europe from the modern Hungarian valleys to modern Mongolia. This Eurasian part was called the Hingan Carpathian area of the steppes, where the nomadic tribes lived, flourished, and dominated. There were different tribes, but mostly the Turkic Mongolian ones. Toponyms, or geographical names, were an integral part of languages of people and moved with them were spread in a new place and their value was as valuable in the process of cultural exchange as the trade in goods like tea or silk. So what did the migrated people pay attention to? When exploring new lands, pioneers primarily gave the names to rivers, mountains, hills, because rivers and mountains distinguish this or that territory. They're the basis of the geographical map. They draw a contour of a new territory. The great migration of people was accompanied by the discovery of new, uninhabited lands, which is self-evident. Folk wisdom is unshakable in its statements, and this is not without reasons. 
While choosing a name, our ancestors relied on the most important sign of the difference of a certain geographical object. For example, the color of the river Aksu. Aksu is a very common name. In translation, it means white water, which had penetrated almost to the northern borders of Russia. Apparently, this color was more than just white, an icy river, or maybe this word meant something in ancient dialects and languages. And of course, the river was named the fortress or settlement, which was built on the banks of this river, and was named. For example, Aksuisk or Aksakovka. Later, families settled in these lands. It can be found in any anthroponymic dictionary that Aksakov or, for example, Turgenov were originated from Turkic words. Aksak, that is lame, and Turgen, which means fast, irascible. However, according to another hypothesis, the ancestors of these families were named after their birthplace. Sometimes it was vice versa. New toponyms appeared thanks to the names of people, that is, places were named after famous people. There was a well-known Han Sirgiz. He served under Tokhtamush, who is a famous historical figure. Tokhtamush had very good relationships with the Moscow princes. And he sent Sergiz to serve under the Moscow princes. Sergiz did a lot to strengthen the relationship between Russia and the Great Steppe. And the Moscow prince gave him a large territory in the eastern part of Moscow. And then this word was called Sirkizovo, and later Cherkizovo. Most of the people have heard about the Cherkizovsky market, and this name is still alive, but it has a bit bizarre origin, a very interesting origin. And this amazing example is only the tip of the iceberg. Do you know that the name of a monumental building in the center of Moscow also has a Turkic origin? How can a word, Kitai Gorod, Chinatown, be related to this? And what is common between the cheese of Lingir, a village in the south Kazakhstan, and the profession of a coachman? The beauty of the Great Steppe was described by many poets and artists. Even the great Jochi Khan, the eldest son of Genghis Khan, was impressed by the view he saw. This is how the Persian historian of the 13th century, Juzjani, described this moment. When Juchi, the eldest son of Genghis Khan, breathed air and saw water of the Kipchak land, he understood that there is no more pleasant place, no fresher air, no tastier water, no wider meadow and pastures than the ones which are on these lands. Ordinary people interacted with the surrounding world in a different way, not only admiring, but also anticipating the dangers of the world. And this is reflected in toponymy. For example, let's consider Lake It Ishpez. For example, It Ishpez. What does this mean? It means dog. Ishpez means a warning. Do not drink. So this means this water is not potable. In Azerbaijan, there is a river, Jiram Kichmez. In translation, it means river, which is hard for gazelles to cross. The same principle was used by the Altaians, Ayu Kichpez, river which is hard for bear to cross. The Kazakhs also have the river with the same name, Kulan Otpez, river which is hard for a horse to cross. This is the general Turkic principle of giving names to geographical objects. At the same time, one must not forget how carefully and respectfully our ancestors treated nature. They felt themselves as guests in this world and took responsibility for things they would pass to their descendants. There is a story about Tolebi, head of Sunyur Juz. One Sharua, farmer, asked where he could plant millet or wheat. And Tolibi, after thinking for some time, pointed, you can plant here. 
And a year later, Tolibi saw how pleased this Shaura was. Why was he so happy? The reason was that he got a very rich harvest. And he asked, Tolibi, dear, tell me please, why did you advise me to plant wheat or millet on this place? Then Tolibi answered, it is necessary to plant on the place where there are many holes. If there are many holes, then there are many mice. If there are many mice, then there are many snakes. And snakes eat mice, mice eat millet and wheat. Mice and snakes live in an area where water is close to the ground. So this means it is practicality, practicality of the nomad Kazakhs, knowledge and centuries-old knowledge. Our ancestors gave names to human settlements not only based on the laws of logic. For example, the word yamshik, coachman, it is a derivative of the word yama, pit or hole. Formerly, people used to call yama a settlement or a farmhouse where a coachman could change his horse, take rest and then continue his long journey. The so-called langurs also had the same function. Liangar, the word which is used on the territory of Tajikistan, Afghanistan, and of course it is a Turkic word. There were people who were coachmen and they transported travelers. Therefore, there are many words and names of settlements derived from the word Yama and Langar. On the territory of Tajikistan and Afghanistan and in the southern part of Kazakhstan, there is a region in the Tolubi district called Lengar. So you can see, toponym was created from the word indicating profession. And Lengar cheese, which is very popular nowadays, was named after the settlement Lengar, where it once was made by masters. Thus, the profitable profession of its time gave names to several settlements scattered all over the Great Steppe. There is another interesting story about the origin of the word Basurman, which has a bit of a negative meaning today. If we talk about Hungary, there is an example with the word Basurman. Only few people know that this word had a toponymic origin because there is even a town which is called Bisserman. And the one who visited Budapest knows there is a street called Bisserman. There's the echoes of the Turkic toponyms. This means that once the area was called So, then this name was changed a bit. Later, this word appeared in Russian. It was borrowed with a completely different meaning. Basurman means a foreigner, let's say a person of a different religion, who came to the Russian land. So this is the story of the word Basurman. And the reason is the process which is now called globalization, mutual exchange of cultures of different people. In the remote past, many millennia ago, Europe reminded a huge Thai Kazan, pot, where various ethnic groups and nationalities mixed up. And during centuries, they consolidated, they disunited, some of them died, others migrated. So there was an intensive process of consolidation and ethnogenesis. There's a hypothesis that the symbol of Moscow, the Kremlin, is also a Turkic toponym. Of course, most of people believe that this word is originally Russian. Vladimir Ivanovich Dahl, Russian lexicographer, interprets this word as fortress inside the city, wall with loopholes, gates and towers. However, there are supporters of the hypotheses which states that the word Kremlin is a derivative of the Mongolian word Kirim or Kirmim, which means fortress, fortress wall. 
just like the theory of the origin of the name Kitai Gorod, or Chinatown. The word Kitai Gorod has a pure Turkic origin. It is a famous place in Moscow, very ancient, and if one visited Moscow, he or she saw this wall of Kitai Gorod. And any guide will tell you that it has the shape of the moon. And this place was called Kat, that is strong, I, a wall, so it means strong moon. This is how the word Kitai Gorod appeared. There was assimilation and therefore the word was changed a bit. People started to settle on this place and it became almost a town and was called Kitai Gorod. Experience has shown that knowing the history of the origin of toponymy is not only interesting but also useful. Which famous geologist discovered mining field based on its name? What legend is connected with the Karatau Mountains? And was the name of the Simirechi translated correctly? Each geographical object offers not only history but poses a certain secret. It can be a legend or a practical research of our ancestors. One of the most significant examples is the copper capital of Kazakhstan, the Zhizkazgan city. Everybody knows our famous scientist Kanish Satpayev. Everyone knows his greatest discovery. After all, a young scientist, Kanish Satpayev, began the development of copper deposits with an astonishing guess. Let's consider the word Zhizkazgan. Everyone thinks that copper mining has begun and thus the city received the name Zhizkazgan. In translation, it means digging copper, but in fact it was vice versa. People already were mining tin and other minerals. And this name of the settlement prompted the scientists to the thought that here copper could be found. And after excavations, copper was found. This is the history of the word. This is the history of toponyms. And when we say Zhizkazgan, when we say Timirtau, when we say Altai, we must remember that first there was a word, and only then there were these developments and findings that have been enriching our country. But not always the name of a geographical object should be interpreted in literal sense. Sometimes toponym hides an archaic legend with its own morality. For example, the Kilin Shiktau Massif which is located in the South Kazakhstan region. According to legend, either a hundred or thousands of years ago, a very noble and wise Bai, a rich man, lived in the steppe. He had a single daughter. When it was time to marry her, Bai found a worthy groom and prepared his daughter for the wedding. He prepared a very rich dowry for his daughter. At that time, she claimed why the plate for the dog feeding was not made of gold. The father was offended because of such insolence of his daughter and put the curse on her, and she was turned into stone. It is the current chain of the Karatau Mountains. Despite many years of research, the history of the origin of many toponyms remains a mystery to this day. Scientists have to make assumptions as there is a lack of documented data. What does the word Caspian mean? What does Irtish? mean. The etymology of these names has not been solved yet. For example, the word Caspian was mentioned in the works of ancient Greek philosophers, writers and historians. It was mentioned in the works of Herodotus, Pliny. The Caspian Sea is more than 70 names, Hazar Sea, Perhaps it would be easier to make assumptions if the researchers knew at which period of time this or that toponym was originated. But the age of the name is also difficult to determine, as to find its involvement to the language group. Well, let's take the peninsula Mangishlak. This is one of the most ancient toponyms in Kazakhstan. 
there have been a lot of discussions and studies about the meaning of this word. In 1865, Budagov published a dictionary of Russian Tatar words where he included words Mangishak, Mangistau. The dictionary of Mahmud Kashgari toponym Mangishlak is mentioned. And so we can count from this time. The sources of the 10th century mentioned it as a peninsula of thousands of wintering places. Mangishlak, the city, is shown in medieval Italian maps. And if we are talking about the 10th century, who knows what century this peninsula received this name. This means it is one of the most ancient toponyms in Kazakhstan. Surprising is that some of already discovered and studied geographical objects still cause new theories and assumptions. For example, Jitsu, a rich, fertile region which has attracted travelers from old centuries, is translated from Kazakh as Simireche, Seven Rivers. At first glance, it is the correct translation. The number seven really has a sacral significance in the Turkic culture. Seven days of the week, seven cervical vertebrae in the human body. Seven stars of the Big Dipper in Kazakh, Jiti Kharakshi, the Code of Laws, Jiti Jargi, and so on. And so the region which was called by Kazakh Jitisu was translated into Russian at the beginning of the 19th century as Seven Rivers, Simirechia, and the region was called the Simirechia region, which was located on the territory of the present Almaty, in the north of the Kyrgyz Republic. Whereas for the Kazakhs, Jitisu has more of a sacral meaning. The sacral meaning is also shown in the proverb Jer Janati Jitisu, which means Jitisu is heaven on earth. And here are the greatest Saka burial mounds. Our ancestors buried the outstanding personalities of their time on this territory because here is a sacral line. Here is Jitisu. Here is heaven on earth. It is likely that Jitisu is more than just a region where seven main rivers flow. Perhaps the origin of toponym comes not only out of the sacred figure, but also out of its substantive cultural significance in the life of people. As historians say, ethnic groups which settled here were fascinated with the land and its fertility. They used to say, just put a stick and a cart will grow here. This is the evaluation of Jitisu as sacred as a rich place. And then in Kazakh there is a word Jitisu Shilik, which means wealth. The Kazakhs say, Jitisti, that is achieved. In this sense, Jitisu can be translated as achievement and as grace. This confirms that even centuries later, we are pioneers in the study of toponyms. The secrets hidden in the etymology of geographical names are a bottomless gold mine of information about the life of our ancestors. We are still moving towards the search. It is an unexplored region. The etymology of the geographical names of Kazakhstan is still full of mysteries and secrets that are waiting for their researchers. Learning the history of the native land, going into details of the secrets of our toponyms, traveling to nearby countries and finding their echoes of the common past. We cannot disagree with Lev Nikolaevich Gumilyov's words, the nomads of the Great Steppe played a great role in the history and culture 
of mankind, like Europeans and Chinese, Egyptians and Persians, Aztecs and Incas.